have a much anticipated pen today and that pen came in this white cardboard sleeve and when you take it off you put it away you get this very nice box and this is again I, I have received so many review requests this is I know this is anticipated so I'm opening the box it is a type P fountain pen pilot I honestly don't know what that means but that's what it is you have your little soft foamy rubber uh, and then you have the pen with a bottle of ink I uh, this is from Ackermann in The Hague I went there I tried out a whole bunch of nibs it was a very pleasant experience as it always is because they take time for you there uh, this is the coolest pilot bottle I have seen so far usually I'm not very impressed by their bottles but I, I really enjoy this model nice broad foot making it very stable even on my hand it's so a black ink came with it 70 milliliters and here is the actual pen I'm trying to find a spot to put this down but I have it right there okay the pilot custom a23 what makes it special uh, there are a lot of pilot pens out there and in my experience they are a little hard to get in Europe some of the models uh, I have been told by a European vendor that pilot pens are sold at what is cost for him in the US so you can imagine that to try and compete with that is very difficult and I think that is one of the reasons uh, you see not so many pilots out there this pen would cost 599 euros um, here um, but check out the price in dollars and I think you'll be surprised at the very large difference I do not understand why this is I don't understand the strategy being in effect there in any case it is what it is and this is a popular pen what makes it special it's a vacuum filling system uh, we've seen that before on uh, vintage pens but you also we've seen it more recently on for example the Twisby VAC 700 uh, and here you see it on this pilot okay I'm going to cover the parts of the pen I'll tell you what I like about it what I don't like about it and then do a writing sample um, top of the cap finial nothing going on there gold clip with the, the pilot ball that is uh, common common for them uh, there's definitely some spring there not an extreme amount and there is this uh, sticker on the cap which has instructions before writing point the nib upwards and unscrew the tail knob about two millimeters I'll come back to that in a second we have a very fairly uniform barrel that then starts to taper down there and here you have the turning knob the cap screws off I can show you the center band here it says uh, custom 823 and then it has three stars and then it says pilot made in Japan on the back uh, we have a section and I would say a nice fairly large nib which is very much in balance with the section I would say threads here that are not really sharp I find them pleasant to hold the section is definitely big enough to hold and they have the pen And as you can see it's not a very small pen uh, it's definitely on the long side it is not the girthiest pen out there but it is not a very fine pen uh, slim pen I, either so that's quite cool uh, the nib is uh, gold uh, it is 14 karat uh, this is a, a medium soft and it, uh, it it is I would say number six size nib now you can see it here it's all gold it's not a two-tone nib and I think it all, yeah it also says pilot and a 14k 585 with some scroll work okay now how to fill this pen uh, this is the translucent brown model and you can see the ink in there there you go uh, of course you can fill it up more there was also a darker model in the store but then you can't really see the inner workings you see something I don't know how well you can see but there's something like a piston in there the trick is you unscrew this end cap you pull this out uh, and that uh, you just pull it all the way back you put it in a bottle of ink I'm going to very carefully put that back in there I didn't actually splatter ink very good so with that uh, undone the piston pulled out you put it in a bottle of ink and then you push that piston back down that creates a vacuum and at some point the barrel gets a little wider and when the vacuum pops 
ink is drawn into the pen. People love that mechanism, it is a lot of fun. Visconti does it on their uh, dual chamber power filler models, as I said. Um, Twisby does it on their VAC 700 models. And an interesting observation that I did not make, but that uh, Paul in the uh, in Akamon pointed out, is that it looks like the, the inner stuff of this pen is identical to what is used on Twisby VAC 700s. And you can even use the Twisby wrench to unscrew the back end, uh, the whole piston assembly. Okay, so here you have this pen, and people are berserk about this pen. They go absolutely nuts, um, and personally, I don't see the appeal. Yes, it is a larger pen, yes, it has a cool filling system, and the soft nib is definitely nice, but I cannot say I've not had any issues with it. The nib runs pretty dry, it skips, not when you're flexing, but in normal writing, and upon writing a full page, it runs dry. And yes, with these types of pens, you need to open this uh, back end, as they say in the sticker, about two millimeters to open that main ink chamber, because at some point that will run out, it will create a vacuum, uh, you will just have a pen that won't write. But even when I do that, I find it runs dry. And considering how expensive this type of pen is, I would expect that to not happen. And I have definitely had models on which that did not happen. Uh, not of this specific pen, but my VAC 700 ran dry too, and then the Viscontis I've used with a, 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 the double chamber power filler system have not run dry on me. Um, so I have the feeling it is a nib that may require a little bit of tuning. Maybe the feed is not entirely adequate for a, uh, a flexi nib, but on the other hand it is a fairly fine nib, as Japanese nibs typically are, so this medium is closer to western fine. Even though it is very fine and you would not expect a giant ink demand, even when non-flexing it runs a little dry. Having said all of that, even though this is a pen that does not really appeal to me personally, I see why people like it. Um, the vacuum system, especially if you use a little trick, you can fill the entire barrel. That's a lot of ink. So if you need to have a lot of ink, you do a lot of writing, take lecture notes, whatever you need to be on the road and write, it is a nice system. Because it just holds a lot of ink, way more than any converter will ever hold, and also more than the typical or well, pretty much any uh, piston filler that I know will hold. That's very cool. I like the fact that you have the nib options, both regular nibs and soft nibs, so you can have a little bit of flex, and with such a large amount of ink, that really is a lot of fun. I like the model size, I like the fact that it's it has a decent grip section, it is not extremely narrow or anything, I think all of those things are very cool, but at the price these pens are in Europe, I don't think uh, that is entirely justified. Again, check out these pens on eBay from sellers like Engeka and you will find a much lower price. If you buy in the US you find a lower price, but for us Europeans you would then have to pay import duties as it comes in, etc. It will all add up. The good thing about going to a fountain pen store is that you can try out various nibs, various pen models, etc. I do think that's worth it. But even so, these pens are very expensive here. Okay, having said all of that, I think we need to take a couple of measurements. And when I've done that, I'll do a writing sample. Okay. 147.8 millimeters when it is capped, that's 5.8 inches. The pen uncapped is... 130.7 or 5.14 millimeters, uh, sorry, inches. Uh, section diameter is 10.2 or 0.40 inches to 11.2 or 0.44 inches. Barrel diameter is 11.4 or 0.45 inches to 12.2 or 0.48 inches. I'm going to open up my scale here and I'll, it's pretty much uninked. It has a weight of 28 grams and I did find it a pleasant, comfortable weight to use. Okay, thanks a lot to Akamon. I hope this was useful. Let's do a writing sample, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with the custom 823.
Yes, yes, aligning the paper. The nib is a soft medium or SM and the ink is Waterman Florida Blue. It is the original bottle of Florida Blue but now called Serenity or Serenity hardly fits, sorry, but that's what it's called. Let's do a little bit of writing. Runs fine now, smooth writing, that's quite pleasant. Let's do some fast writing. No skips, nothing, so that seems to be working well. As to wetness, No problems there. And of course, what you're interested in, I'm sure, is the line variation offered by the nib. After all, it is a soft medium. Well, it starts out as a regular uh, Western fine, I would say, and I'm going to apply some more pressure. Let's see what happens. And you can definitely see that this is a nib that can handle some pressure. At some point, it will start a railroad, but it, it definitely handles pressure fairly well which allows you to do some interesting flex writing given the nib won't or the feed won't give out take it a little slow maybe prime the feed a little bit then you should be able to get out quite some line variation and that is a feature I definitely find impressive of this pen so there you have it I um, hope this was useful and um, I will gladly see you later. Bye-bye.